So I'm going to talk about spotting otters in the Lee, in Cork City in particular, um, moving away from the bride just for this evening. Um, I've had some great success uh, spotting otters in the Lee, and I thought I might spread the, uh, some tips, I'll give you some tips on, on how to go about spotting them. Right. So uh, first of all, before I go any further, I'm going to show you a series of incredible pictures, and I cannot take credit for these pictures. They were actually photographed by Chris Martin, who is a chap I meet sometimes while we, uh, we are walk working, uh, walking through the city uh, along the Keys looking to photograph artists or film artists. I bump into him, and he's going one way and I'm going the other, uh, but he very kindly offered to let me use his pictures tonight, and you can see more of his, his work at, on his Instagram page, and his name is at Loose Lens Cap. So remember that, I'll refer to it again at the end of the talk because the pictures are fabulous. Okay, so here we go. Right, Spotting Otters in Cork City, the title of this talk, and it's a short talk, and we will follow with a video, a link at the end. Right, so that's the Eurasian otter, the otter that we're all interested in. It's the only otter in Ireland, and uh, it has some features, uh, uh, kind of peculiar to otters, of course. The webbed feet, the long whiskers, small eyes, small ears, and a very thick tail and dense fur. Okay, the best time of day to look for otters in Cork City. Uh, in my experience, any time of the day is a good time to look for otters in Cork City. Um, you'll often hear that the morning is the best time to spot them, and in some places that may be the case, but in my experience in Cork City, any time of the day. Um, I am often in the city um, in the morning, dropping my kids off to school, and I'll take a look along the keys there, and I've spotted otters then, I've spotted otters at lunchtime, and I've spotted otters in the evening. So any time of the day, so it's worth looking any time of the day in the city. Okay, where to look? Well, fortunately, uh, Cork Nature Network has put a, a trail together, and um, it's, it starts at Christie Ring Bridge, assuming you start at number one, but you don't have to, you can start at number four. Start at Christie Ring Bridge, and you work your way along the keys, um, all the way to Fitzgerald's Park and along the way you'll come across some signs and each sign there's a little bit of information uh, and these are the signs here this is the first one there's a little bit of information about otters different ones at each point uh, so it's a nice little walk to take uh, your children along with or even if you're interested yourself because there's plenty of information along there and there's also uh, little footprints on the path as well to mark the way. Now um, Cork Nature Network also have a great little um, booklet uh, available for download from their site, their website, corknaturenetwork.ie. And it's a very small little booklet, but it's, it's fantastic because it's packed with information about otters. Uh, so I suggest that as soon as you finish this, you go along there. And what you might do is put a link in on our Twitter page as well that you can, uh, you can, you can download that little booklet. Okay, I have my own map that I've made. And this is, this is the, 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 the route marked out in green here of Cork City is where I photographed or filmed most of the video that you'll see at the end of this, um, this short talk here. So I basically, I live in Blackpool, so I usually start at, uh, at Christie Ring Bridge and then I work my way down to uh, around the Mercy Hospital. And then I cut across to the Lancaster Lodge uh, area and the Lee Hotel, this, this stretch of river here. Uh, and along the uh, South Channel. And that stretch of river along the South Channel is a really good place to look at the moment. Anyway, uh, I've had lots of luck along there. So uh, that is a route to take. What you should do is do a screen grab of that. But what we might do is put that up on the Twitter page as well. So you can have a, a good look at it. Okay, what you need to do is um, scour the banks. Uh, when the tide is low, particularly, uh, there's more area exposed. And there are a number of places um, along the Lee where you have patches of greenery and vegetation. Uh, and uh, if you scan those um, you are, and look for movement, you could well spot otters. In fact, I was along the Lee yesterday and I noticed a number of places uh, when the tide had subsided, I could see otter prints along the banks. They're very easy to spot once you know what you're looking for. Okay, sometimes the, uh, the reason why you might spot an otter in the bank is they would bring large items of prey to the sides of the river so that it's easier to eat. You can imagine eating an eel like that is rather uh, a, bit, a bit of a task if you're, uh, if you're floating in the water. And you can see there that the heron is looking wistfully on, but is unlikely to get any of that eel. Okay, it's uh, otter having a little drink of water there. 
Okay, look along the key walls as well. Um, I, a couple of weeks ago, I was walking along doing my usual look and I noticed uh, an otter um, swimming along uh, next to the, the key walls and climbing in and out of holes in the walls. So he'd climb in for only for a few seconds and then climb back out again and swim down to the next one. So that's another place to watch. Again, when the tide is lower, um, there's more area for the artists to move around. And um, so that's something to keep an eye out on as well. And there again is another uh, picture of the otter. You can see there the webbed feet, which help it swim and the thick tail, really thick muscular tail. Check the key steps as well, another place to look. Sometimes the otters go up onto the steps with prey to eat it, or they might go up there and sprint. I've noticed a few places where there is otter sprint on the steps. So keep a lookout on those. And these wooden steps, so you can see the, uh, the otter has a sizable fish there that he's tucking into. Makes it easier if it's out of the water. You can imagine trying to eat your dinner while you're floating in a swimming pool, it wouldn't be easy. And then we have the otter peeking up over the steps. Okay, follow the bubbles. So looking at the surface of the water as well, otters leave a distinctive trail of bubbles because what happens is when they come up, air collects in the coat or in the fur uh, and it insulates them. Uh, and then the, the air is squeezed out of the fur as the otter goes under the water and the pressure forces the air out. So it's quite distinctive. So if you follow the trail of bubbles, because the otters are not underwater for, for too long, my my count on some of the videos is between 15 and 20 seconds, depending on what, if they catch something. Uh, and if you follow those, that trail of bubbles and stay ahead of it, you'll end up uh, seeing one of these guys pop up. And he may have something in his mouth if he's uh, been uh, successful, or he may not. In this case, no. But in the next one, yes, a successful catch there. And he's crunching in on that. Okay, this is the tip that works best for me, actually. I've had the most success with this. Look and listen for sudden movement uh, on the water. Now, it may be a cormorant, um, you know, it could be something else, but uh, most of the time, this has worked for me. And it's better, actually, if you go early in the morning or on a Sunday morning where there's less traffic in the city, because as you'll see from the video, uh, traffic noise is, it, it just drowns out everything else, you know? And uh, these um, otters are actually really close to the roads. Uh, it's amazing how close they are actually to humans. And um, so if you keep an eye out for that, you could see uh, uh, one of these otters um, in the water. Usually, uh, if they're swimming on the top, it's just the head sticking out and you might see the tail. It's kind of a V shape as they move through the water. Okay, and that's the final picture there, the otter with his tongue out at us. Um, you can't get me that kind of look. And that's Chris there, the photographer who supplied us with all these fantastic pictures. That's his uh, uh, Instagram page. Please go and have a look. Loose Lens Cap is the name he uses. And uh, we're going to put a, a video link um, in the chat there. That should be there already. And on your own time, you can go and have a look at that. We're going to put the link in our Twitter and Facebook pages as well.